to our Sun and Rising. Welcome to your April 2022 Astro Update. It's Raina here. Well, April's a month that a lot of you are probably happy about because you know that the sun goes into your sign towards the end of the month. And um, actually, you could even say a little past the middle of the month. Uh, this year, it's going to be on the 19th. And that's called your solar return. Of course, your actual solar return is when the sun goes to the degree of your uh, sun sign, if you're uh, listening for that. And uh, if, if you're listening for your rising sign, whatever that degree of Taurus, let's say like I have um, Taurus rising at 26 degrees. So it's usually around the 17th or the 18th of, of May when the sun is crossing over into my first ha house in my natal chart. And that you can look at those kinds of transits as a new beginning because it's a new cycle. You know, it's crossing from the 12th to the first house. So um, that is the technical new year or, or, or uh, time when you have your solar return for the sun signs. But in a general sense, just having the sun going into your sign is wonderful. And speaking of which, um, there's a, a new moon on the first day of the month. So it's like we start out April with a bang. And being that it's in the Aries season, that makes a lot of sense because Aries is the first sign of the zodiacs and it's a cardinal fire sign. So it's one of those the, the cardinal signs representing each of the four seasons. And so it has that sense of action connected to it, like things happening, a uh, catalyst with the cardinal signs. So this new moon is actually falling in your 12th house, which is not, you know, a place of uh, the movers and shakers doing a lot in the material world. It's, it's a house of the hermit. It's a hermit house. So it's more about uh, contemplative types of behaviors like meditation, reflection, and not so much, you know, doing a lot of physical stuff and outward stuff. This is uh, about uh, doing the inner work, if you will. And this is Pisces domain. So it's like all things Piscean, the spiritual, yada, yada. And you have a new moon here. So that could, you know, possibly be something connected to a new um, spiritual practice. Maybe you go to a new yoga center or something like that that you've never gone to before. And suffice it to say, you have new moons in Aries every year. And maybe sometimes you don't do a damn thing uh, during the time of the new moon. But I'm just saying that if you want to look at it as a portal, it opens up for you to be able to experience newness in the areas of the 12th house of what that represents. So it can be a quiet uh, kind of a thing, but it can be profound on an inner level. And even if you just look at it symbolically, you can still say, okay, this is going to be around the time when I start to meditate regularly, like every day you know, you can make those resolutions and use this timing, whether you believe in, in it or not, to the fullest extent to do what you want to do. Then um, on the um, fifth, Venus is going into Pisces. And on the 14th of April, Mars is going into Pisces. So that's a, a, a nine day a difference, but these are the divine lovers and they are, uh, you know, they, they are pairs, you could say. And because they're inner planets, they tend to stick around each other, but not always because, um, you know, Mars is slower than Venus and there are retrogrades that can happen, but they're like, uh, in the same sign, uh, by the middle of the month. Now, Pisces for Taurus is the 11th house of hopes and wishes. And so Venus and Mars here really might 
make you inspired to go after your dreams, especially when Mars goes there mid month, because, um, you know, there's other things going on with Taurus. You've got a lot. This is a very big time for people with, uh, Taurus sun and rising. And, and the reason is that we have eclipses and the North and South nodes that are tied to Taurus and Scorpio. Um, that are happening. So on that level, and they are connected. It's not, you know, a coincidence, but still. And then we also have um, Uranus and Taurus, and that's going to stick around past 2022. So it's really putting that focal point on Taurus, and you may be sensing shifts within yourself. But, um, the 11th house is really about the long range goals that you have. And these can run the gamut of different types of things that you want to do. And maybe for whatever reason, you've been kind of putting them on the back burner. And now you might feel this sense of like, I am going to go for it. Now, Venus goes there first. So you may see financial gain from something in your career. This is house of gains. It's right next to the 10th house. So if that happens, if you have an increase in your uh, income, you might, that might make you even more inspired. And certainly Taurus is a sign that is motivated by money. So that is something that can really light a fire under you. And if you have been the kind of person who has been sitting back and just like, you know, you know, show me the money, that might be the one thing that is a catalyst to get you going. But I do want to say that there is this um, idealistic sense of the 11th house. So it's not just selfish gain. It might be that you want to be connected to all people. The 11th house is the internet. I mean, the third house too can be social media. Both of these houses can connect to the internet in their own way, but it, the 11th house is the collective and Uranus that rules this house is about technology. So you may be thinking that you want to uh, connect with others in a big way. And that might be one of the reasons why you are um, you know, going to see an increase in your finances because you're taking advantage of this very powerful tool. Taurus is kind of, um, <laughs> I, I wouldn't say like a completely stodgy sign. Now remember I have Taurus rising, so I'm not putting you down, uh, to the exclusion of me. I'm, I'm saying the same thing is that there's a tendency to kind of stick with the tried and true and be a little bit, uh, suspicious of something that is new that is, and, and I think that there's a good reason for it, not just jump on any trend and, you know, but obviously, uh, technology has been around for a while, at least the, the, uh, computer technology. So if you still have held back and, uh, haven't uh, done anything, but you want to, this may be the final push because again, with Uranus and Taurus, Taurians who are Luddites, you know, who kind of uh, reject technology as a whole may find that technology finds them in some way and they can benefit from it. So that might be the one thing that lures you into that arena. And this is also the house of friendships and group associations. So with Venus here, um, you may just be a social butterfly in general, and it may have nothing to do with romance, but you might meet somebody through your friends. And this certainly can make you popular when Venus is here because Venus can lend charm and that can make you popular with groups or your, your friends. Um, you just have more harmony with them at this time. Mars, you know, is that uh, um, more aggressive side. So, you know, can there be some clashes with certain people? Maybe 
maybe it's like you you kind of sort out the wheat from the chaff and you you realize that there are some people that you just don't get along with and you decide that you're going to take charge of that situation um, and just deal with the people that you like. Um, by the way, I did not put this down, but on the 12th of uh, April is the time when uh, Jupiter and Neptune are going to form a conjunction. Now, again, this is also in Pisces. So this is a loaded area for you, this 11th house in April. This could be about making your dreams come true. And Jupiter and Neptune can be a very idealistic but lucky with Jupiter type of situation where something happens. Maybe it's a fluke. Um, I would say with Neptune that it was pr it's probably meant to be because the 12th house that Neptune rules, that is a ruler of, uh, you know, where uh, Neptune rules is about karma. And karma is not something that's just punishment. Karma can be, um, you know, you could call it like fate in a sense, but um, what you have earned from your past good deeds. So you can have good karma. And, um, I mean, this is in the 11th house, but this can be some kind of a goal that you reach, um, that maybe you never expected to reach this quickly or at all. Um, you, you had hoped that you would be able to do it, but you weren't sure. So maybe there's a miracle, expect a miracle. Um, on the 16th, we have a full moon at 26 degrees of Libra. So Libra is, um, the sixth house for you. Um, this is the house of service to others. Now, depending on other factors, if you are unhappy in your job, you may just decide to up and leave. You might just say, I've had enough and you're out of there. Um, Obviously, other factors would have to support that, but, you know, it's possible. So um, this can also be a promotion. <laughs> See how somebody somebody wrote to me and said, you just said some, you know, I, I said this for, for a different uh, forecast that was the same type of scenario. You just said either I'm going to quit my job or I'm going to get promotion like they were the complete opposite things, but they both could happen. And they thought that was preposterous. And it's really not because, um, the full moon brings something to a head, which means that if there are problems, it can just bring it to that boiling point and then something has to give, but it can also be a harvest or the Zenith, the apex, the top level of something. So it's like the person's at the top of their game and they get a promotion. That's a, that's like, you know, the highest they can go or higher than what, where they've been. So, you know, I don't see what the, the strange thing is about that, but yeah, I mean, it could be either or, I mean, either one, the full moon, um, in the sixth house, may be a time when you feel the urge to purify yourself. This is the house of health. Uh, it could be some health issue that you become aware of, but it can also be a time when you really feel that urge maybe to uh, do some kind of a cleanse or something like that. And there, there are cultures that do fast or I, I, I don't know if I'd say cultures or religious practices. I know when I was going to Kundalini yoga that they would always you know, talk about fasting at the new moon and the full moon, but the full moon is a time of a lot of times when people do that. Um, and you know, this being the sixth house of health, that's what, why I say that as well. Uh, but also, you know, it might be if you find out something about your health and you decide, or, you know, quitting something that you think will make you feel better about your health, like quitting caffeine, for instance. Um, on the 19th, the sun goes into Taurus, and this is 
the, um, you know, your first house. And that should, you know, make you feel more like yourself. When you have the sun in the 12th house, it's hibernation mode. So it's kind of like um, making your debut, so to speak, when the sun comes back into that first house. And um, 10 days later on the 29th, Mercury goes into Gemini, and that's your second house of earned income. And this is the house that you rule. So you are all about that house. And when Mercury is there, your mind is aligned with what, you know, how you are wired. So you're wired to, um, be about money, be about your possessions. Uh, when I say be about it, it's all these practical matters. Um, and it's what you excel at. So your mind is aligned with how you view the world from a tangible perspective. And this can be very helpful if you are trying to do something in particular as it connects with finances, because your, your mind is aligned with that way of, uh, of approaching things. Um, and on the same day, there's a Neptune retrograde in Pisces. So, wow. I mean, that's very interesting because like I said, Jupiter is also here, but Jupiter is direct. Neptune is going retrograde. Now what this means, oh, no, Neptune goes retrograde every year and it's a time of uh, reality checks when Neptune goes retrograde. So all of the lofty ideas and dreams and all of that, and especially the 11th house can be just that kind of place have to be dealt with in terms of reality, you know, fantasy versus reality, the ideal versus the, um, more likely scenario. And the, you, you, I think that a Taurus person can handle the reality check because you are somebody who likes to keep it real. So if there is something that you have wanted in your life, and maybe, who knows, maybe you even get it with that Jupiter-Neptune conjunction, you realize it's not the end-all be-all. And so just in terms of being able to feel like, wow, I had this thing happen, but I still am not like in a constant state of ecstasy, that may be kind of a bit of a blow if you thought that this was going to put you over the top, but by the same token, it can be a relief because you realize that you can still go after your dreams and know that nothing will ever just completely put you into that state of oblivion where you're never, um, having any kind of, um, you know, regular emotions. And I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people have problems with consistent contentment because they think that happiness is just being in ecstasy all the time and having peak moments when in fact, a lot of the time that we are um, living and breathing in this world, we're doing mundane things. We're doing everyday things, you know, washing the clothes, buying groceries, the things that are very, um, day-to-day -day stuff and people who just fantasize about having these amazing experiences, they're, they're not being, they're not living in reality. And that's the problem. If they were, and they could find happiness, it's kind of like a Zen thing. If, if you can find happiness in the day-to-day, -day, uh, seemingly drudgery of, of existence, and you can be okay with that, then those peak moments will be sweeter because you know that either way you're good. And, um, so that, that's kind of what Eckhart Tolle uh, is talking about when he talks about present moment awareness, where you're not like regretting the past, you're not anticipating the future. You're living in this 
eternal now moment and feeling um, a, a quiet bliss, not a, you know, not needing that, that oblivion. So um, anything that you have to maybe rethink, retool, um, scale down your expectations. Maybe you want to write a book or I don't know, something, and you thought it was only going to take you two months and it's going to take you four months or six months. Then you're able to adjust and it's not a big deal that it ha it's not going to happen when you think it's going to happen. So these are the... 11th house are the long range goals. Doesn't mean you can't make them happen, but you have to be realistic about it. And then on the 30th, a solar eclipse in your sign, Taurus, 10 degrees. Now, um, those of you who are born from zero to 10 degrees, I mean, zero to nine degrees, this is actually falling in your 12th house. So this will be um, um, this can bring up, and this is for the rising sign as well. Um, so basically it would be pretty much all the, the Torians who are born in April, who would have it in the 12th house, maybe not the 30th of the month. Um, it depends on the year though. So, um, that would be, you know, bringing up things that perhaps are, are like self-defeating patterns for you to be very clear about so that you're able to eradicate them. You will have a lunar eclipse here, uh, this November. So six months from now, but, um, this can also be just starting a whole new pattern with your um, spiritual life, your spiritual path. And for some of you, if, um, other things have been going along with that, you might even be doing some kind of a training and that would be really wonderful. Um, this date though is not particularly important for when these things can transpire. I mean, even in March, some of you may notice that things are starting to rock and roll or in May, they might. So don't think, and you know, I'm just, that's almost arbitrary too. It might even be for the next six months. Some astrologers think that the eclipse energy lasts for months. Um, now I still don't know. I think this might be called a dark moon when it's the second new moon in the month. You know how we talk about the blue moon for the second full moon in the month. Well, there's a uh, corresponding, um, term for the second new moon in the month. And I didn't realize this until not too long ago that this was going to be occurring. So it's pretty cool. And especially since this is a solar eclipse. So for the rest of you, this is happening in the first house of the self and, you know, be open to your life changing in a major way. Just like that lunar eclipse last November was meant to herald um, endings in your life. This is new beginnings. And if you are um, welcoming these in, you're going to do very well. If you're afraid, you know, if you're apprehensive about it, if you're just downright reluctant to experience anything new, you want to keep everything as it is, you might struggle more because these are not, these are non-negotiable. This is happening whether you like it or not. Now I will say that I've had, I had not too long ago in a, a solar eclipse that, that was a direct hit on my son and it didn't seem like it did much of anything. So, I mean, mileage may vary and it doesn't mean that anything bad's going to happen, but uh, this can be a catalyst for a lot of change in the next year. So very exciting Taurus. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a private reading, I um, have a double reading that's very comprehensive. If you're looking for both 
natal chart interpretation, what you came into this life with your cosmic blueprint, along with uh, looking at these transits uh, more than just the month of April, but next 12 months, you know, in different areas of life, what's going to happen. I mean, <laughs> I shouldn't say what's going to happen, what might happen, what the the themes are for this time period. That's called um, my deep dive reading and I have other types of readings as well, but that one is a special price because it's two readings and it's discounted quite a bit compared to if you bought those readings separately. So um, the link is below. I appreciate you listening to this. Take care. Bye.